Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG back with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to improve on the most ultimate without having to change too much now. I know it seems very simple or maybe too good to be true, but trust me guys, you can make improvements just by changing a couple of simple things while driving or in the garage that will help you improve your speed on the Mons Ultimate. So let's get stuck into the video. Breaking in Le Mans Ultimate can be quite difficult and sometimes you may feel like you're, you know, sort of doing the exact same technique lap by lap but then you find yourself locking up the tyres on a random lap. That can happen, that's happened to me. But there are certain things that I have learned that you can sort of change that tends to trigger locking up a lot less and it, it may feel a little bit strange in the beginning but trust me there is a different technique you can use for braking. A technique that I've seen a lot of people from R Factor 2 use, they tend to use it on um, LMU as well and it actually works so when you're coming towards a tight corner like you are doing so now get the majority of your braking done in the higher gears then we're able to spam down the gears later just before the apex of the corner and for whatever reason it seems to be a lot more less um, sensitive to locking up the brakes I'm gonna show you guys again now just watch how I slow the car down in the braking phase as we come into the corner we slow down fifth gear the majority of the heavy braking done, I've holding it in fifth, then fourth, third, second, then first. So we leave a sort of a big gap to where we switch down to fourth gear and third gear. We leave the car in fifth for quite some time and it tends to sort of stabilize the car under braking and not lock the tires up as much. Traction control in LMU is very important. It's not like ACC where you can sort of, the lower the traction, automatically means the faster it's more about finding the right traction combination you've got normal traction control traction cut and traction slip angle which is basically how the car um, arrives in fast corners and how you're able to rotate the car without the back back end slipping then you've got traction cut is how much the traction actually kicks in and then traction control is how much traction you actually use right now i was on the stock traction control for this car and track which was 658 then we change it up and we start using different traction control configurations we'll try 747 you can see we found quite a bit of time some of that might just be naturally me driving a bit faster but i tend to want to use um enough traction to where the back end is not all over the place but also not too much traction to where you can literally hear it every time you put your foot down so basically what you want to do is use enough traction to where you're not having to alter the way you have to drive but sometimes you might want to go down on the traction control cut i tend to want to run the cut around four because i feel like it just it's not as intrusive as five but then you can go and add to the the original traction control and put that up to seven if you want um, then you have to figure out how much you can get away with in terms of the traction slip angle because some cars for instance like the porsche um gte the porsche gte is rotates extremely easy so you don't really have to touch too much the slip angle but for the corvette or the ferrari there's been many times before where i personally have used a lot lower um tc slip angle to help the car rotate and as you know most of the, the races are fixed so you can't really change the setup so these are the sort of things that people will change in order to get the car to do different things from the bog standard default setup me personally on the corvette and the ferrari i would say the slip angle is one of the more important ones because you know the cars do have a little bit more understeer than for, say the porsche and um, you can get away with a little bit more slip on the aston as well but i would definitely say these are the sort of things you need to play around with try and find the correct combination for yourself and i'm guaranteed that you'll find a little bit more time than just using the, the bog standard default Now this is one of the more obvious tips, you need to be able to change your car mid-race and what I mean by that is if you've been racing for sort of five, six laps and the car seems to be a little bit understeery, knock back the brake, brake bias, pull it towards the rear a little bit. If you're in the um, hyper cars, you might want to change the brake migration, pull it towards the rear if you want a little bit more rotation, change the anti-roll bars if the car's not rotating to slow corners, just be able to, you know, adapt in the situation because a lot of the time when i'm racing 
if you just leave the car the same way, by the time the car gets towards the end of the race, it feels a little bit different than it did when you first started. And that's mainly because of the tires. So be open to changing sort of things. Make sure you set up your hotkeys for the important things like, like uh, brake bias and stuff like that. And trust me, it will help you in your race. Even if it's one or two clicks, it's definitely an advantage to do. Now, my last tip may not seem like anything special, but practice is so big. And I think a lot of people don't know exactly how to practice. A lot of people don't practice with the intention of actually improving in all different areas. It's not just about how fast you can drive over a lap. It's also about building knowledge. And for me, I tend to go into practice sessions by myself in single player and I will try different traction control configurations, different brake bias configurations. I will literally go and check the pedal force and see how high I can run the pedal force before I begin locking up and making mistakes. And that way I can find the perfect balance on any particular track. Um, brake bias, I'll practice with the brake bias. I'll practice with the different tires, softs, mediums, hards. I'll practice with mediums on the front, softs on the rear. I'll practice all these different things just to be able to find more consistency. I'll do 10 lap stints just to see, okay, let's see how my tires fall off if I try this. And then let's see if I can make my tires last if I try this combination with TC or this combination of tires with a soft on the, on the rears and a medium on the front. I'll do all these things just to find a little bit more consistency and stuff like that. And again, it may seem annoying, but at the end of the day to improve it doesn't matter what industry you're in in terms of gaming, sim racing or whatever, you have to be able to put the time into grind because that's where you're going to find most of the improvements. A lot of people feel like they've hit the ceiling um, at a certain speed and they don't know how to find anything else. My general thing is I will practice in the same way that the cars are in um, fixed lobby. So I'll only change the TC and the brake bias and the brake force. That's pretty much all I will touch. And I will just try all different combinations before, you know, even if I end up binning it, restart, go back to pits, I'll just keep on doing it. A lot of the time when you're doing um, offline, you'll notice that it tends to be a little bit slower than online because online, I feel like the, the track grip is a little bit more predictable. Whereas offline, I ain't gonna lie, most of the time I forget to change the track grip. So I just leave it and most of the time when you leave the track grip offline it's actually on light which is sort of you know if you're used to acc it's like having a track on green or or fast track conditions it's not the best condition so sometimes you may not feel like you're even going that quick but when you take that same stuff that you've learned online you end up actually improving quite a bit and that's happened to me quite a few times so that's my sort of process to how i try to improve i don't just go and just blindly just grind laps and try and go as fast as i can because to be honest a lot of the stuff in lmu is not just about your one lap speed one lap speed is great for the leaderboards but there's been times where i've been fast but after four laps my my car's falling off i'm turning the wheel too much i'm sliding the tires too much and you know i start locking the brakes make a mistake and overall you know my race pace is pretty bad and then there's other times where my, my fastest lap time is not as quick but i'm able to do this a similar lap time almost all the way through the race and that's kind of what you want and um, you can see that the track grip is actually light in the um in, in the pre settings for making a single lobby so remember to change it to heavy i think is the best conditions to get the most grip i always leave it on light for whatever reasons i just forget and just go straight in but um definitely put some time in man make sure you focus on what you're trying to learn but anyway guys it's cryptic tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace